Hey guys, Brian Beeler coming to you from the Storage View Lab alongside Kevin O'Brien today. We've got another review we're breaking down for you. This time it's the Seagate Fire CUDA 120 SSD. Yeah, it's the capacities are getting larger and people still buy SATA. They do buy SATA and as you say, it's getting larger. It's a four terabyte SSD, SATA form factor, seven millimeter height, pretty garden variety for what we're used to dealing with from the SATA perspective. But it's part of the larger portfolio that Seagate offers in the Fire CUDA line, which includes uh, docks, uh, portable SSD, uh, the 510 and the 520 SSDs, the PCIe Gen 3 and Gen 4 respectively. So they've got a pretty broad portfolio. Yeah, they cover a large swath of the market. So taking a look there, we've got a little bit of the family uh, set up already. We're just missing the 520, just gotta get that guy in. But uh, in terms of what the 120 offers, Seagate really views this as uh, being the hard drive replacement still. That's the SATA pitch. Uh, decent endurance. It's a 0.7 drive right per day. Uh, and then, of course, capacities of up to 4 terabyte. They also come in 500 gig, 1 terabyte, and 2 terabyte. But the nice thing about these is that they use TLC NAND, which is uh, a big differentiator, as you will see in the performance charts from the uh, QLC drives that we've seen in the past and then the TLC from the OWC drive. Uh, they quote speeds of 560 sequential read, 540 megabytes per second sequential write, 100,000 uh, random read IOPS, and 90,000 random write IOPS. So overall, relatively, you know, what we would expect for SATA, five-year warranty, so that's pretty strong for this product. Why don't we take a look and go jump into the uh, the performance numbers and, and just start to break this down. Now, what do we have for comparison? So we have the um, Seagate Fire CUDA 4 terabyte, uh, the Samsung Evo uh, 860 1 terabyte, the OWC Mercury Extreme Pro 4 terabyte, Crucial uh, MX300 1 terabyte, and the Seagate SSD 1 terabyte. Now, this, before we get too far into it, the Seagate SSD was one of their first, so we haven't refreshed that review with their... Uh, Barracuda line just yet, so prepare yourself for what you may <laughs> see on the charts. Just ignore the teal line if you if you so choose. But the OWC is the the latest uh, high capacity SATA drive that's on TLC NAND. Like I said, we're not doing the comparison with the QLC drives mostly because your test plan for QLC is different. You only test a small section of the drive because they just can't withstand the uh, the higher intensity workloads. Yeah, so I didn't want to bring the uh, QLC products into this comparison because there's a difference in how they're tested. And uh, basically we do a 5% partition size for uh, TLC. And then for QLC, because they just get destroyed normally, we do a 1% uh, partition size. Right, so it's important to understand the distinction when you look at our uh, reviews of the QLC drives to just to understand that we're only testing a very, very small portion of it. And the drives tend to perform relatively well and in increasingly better as new generations of QLC drives come out. And the other thing that's interesting here is that when you look at the pricing, the Samsung QLC 4 terabyte drive right now is about 500 bucks on Amazon. This guy is about 650. So that just keep that in your mind as you're as you're thinking about the comparison of the the price points for four terabytes of flash. And the OWC comparable is even a little bit more than that. It's a little closer to uh, the mid sevens, I, I think, last we looked. So anyway, you've got $150 delta between the Fire CUDA 4 terabyte and the uh, Samsung 870 QVO 4 terabyte. So that's that's the delta to be thinking about as you're looking at high capacity flash. But back to the numbers, what do we see here with the 64K sequential? So it tops out at maybe like 470-ish or whatever, and it, it ekes out a little bit of performance above the Extreme Pro. And again, this so in a lot of these tests, and this is true across a lot of different drive types, higher capacity models tend to win out with uh, performance. So did uh, did really well in the uh, sequential retest, going to uh, sequential writes. So this is the teal part I told people not to look at. Yeah, certain drives uh, in our VD bench testing, um, it's a test where uh, we test from a 10% load up to a 120% load. And as the uh, cute, as the thread counts and uh, low levels increase, certain drives will start to go just sporadic. And uh, the cleaner the line, the was, better the performance. I was thinking spastic, but this is definitely sporadic as well. And if it, it looks like it, a butterfly, it might not be the best performance. Probably not. Uh, in this chart, our Fire CUDA review sample is 
right in line with OWC. There, it t- looks hidden, but it's right underneath it. Yeah. Okay. So again, leading the the way. Yeah. Now, uh, random read. It uh, leads the pack, uh, and this is an area where uh, it tops out at probably around just under eighty thousand IOPS. And um, again, it's an area where higher capacity drives will win out to a certain extent. Okay. Uh, and then moving down to our uh, 4K random write uh, workload. Again, it ekes out a little performance. Above Just the, barely uh, squeezes out ahead of the OWC. Yeah, at around, it uh, looks like maybe 63,000 IOPS or so peak. Again, it did pretty well. Yeah, well. We've seen higher numbers on M.2 NVMe drives. But well, yeah, well, it's for, for SATA, category. it's doing it's doing just fine. Yeah. What else you got? So now we go on to our uh, VDI workloads, and again, if it looks like a uh, crazy, maybe a squirrel or something, it might not be the best performance, but um, the uh, FireCuda 120 kind of ranks in the middle of the pack in that group. So this one's interesting because Samsung, which has always done a great job with their drives, even that one terabyte Evo, hanging out pretty strong for this more intensive workload. Yeah, Samsung's been really good on offering very strong balanced performance across a lot of different mixed workloads. And we see that in the consumer and enterprise space. Right, where we often see drives tuned for a specific use case where they do really well and then fall off in other things. But uh, anyway, FireCuda hangs relatively well here, so that's all right. Then in our uh, VDI boot workload, again, uh, it gets a little bit sporadic at the uh, top level. Although you, at that range, you're going above uh, full saturation. So most drives probably aren't eked out in that range. But again, it performs pretty strongly. And up until the um, the higher uh, load levels, it did offer the uh, lowest latency that uh, particular You had test. a 21,000 IOPS or 20,000 and a half maybe. It, it does really strong. Yeah. And then our final thing, the VDI Monday login. And again, kind of a snakish profile moving along. <laughs> But um, it's more like a triple hump camel. Yeah, and that's kind of in the range where garbage collection starts to uh, to work in. Things get a little bit weird. But again, it it did pretty well. The Samsung did lead that pack again, and it's just how the different drives perform. But it it performed pretty well. So overall, it looked pretty good. It did a little better on the uh, on the 64k workloads and. But for a four terabyte drive, you're buying this thing for capacity, not necessarily performance, which does bring up an interesting point. Who needs four terabyte in a two and a half inch form factor? Not many laptops have that bay anymore. Well, some gaming notebooks still offer a two and a half that inch bay, bay for uh, storage. And when you're looking at it, I'm thinking of like the last time I installed Fortnite on a notebook, which happens to be fairly frequently now. <laughs> um, it takes up a very large footprint. So there are certain games, especially ones where maps come out and uh, any regular updates, you might need to impact that storage more often. And that's where QLC starts, even if you're looking like, okay, well, it's gonna be read most often, there are certain situations where you might be running into a higher write workload. Sure. In a desktop chassis though, I guess you would go, you could go with uh, several smaller drives, right? A couple two terabyte where the price per terabyte's a little bit more advantageous. Yeah, but then, I mean, you might be working with like RAID 0 or JBOT or something to increase your sure. span to increase the storage or capacity. But I mean, there are certain areas where the, the, a, a single large drive will uh, help out. Okay, so it's 650, which is retail right now. The drive just came out, uh, so it's, it's relatively young in the market. We expect that price to come down uh, and put maybe a little bit more pressure on, on Samsung and close that gap a little bit. But in terms of its capabilities, really pretty strong across the board, even on the more intensive workloads. Uh, so if you need the bigger capacity drive, the FireCuda looks like a good alternative. Yeah.